You ready for this deal, Jimbo? Live action, Cody. Old stories like long lost friends. Rodeos and late night bends. History before our time. Round pens and pasture rides. Cowboys of the Osage. Woo, that's a good song. I love it every time I hear it, Jimbo. Great, great that song. That kid knocked it out of the park. Speaking of songwriting, be sure and uh, get your copy of the Oklahoma Mike CD. Jimbo has written himself a batch of songs, and he has two songs on the Oklahoma Mike CD right now. So everybody get your CDs, and uh, we'll, we'll find out a way for y'all to order them here real soon. Howdy, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Cowboys of the Osage podcast, brought to you by the Ben Johnson Cowboy Museum, located in historic downtown Pahuska, Oklahoma. Hey, it's old Cody over here, and as always, I got my main man with me, Mr. Rodeo Historian himself, Jimbo Snively. Hey, good morning, Jimbo. Good to see you. Who do we have today? Hey, Cody boy. It's just another great day in Osage, man. And Cody, we got one of the truly iconic names in the, in the history of rodeo. We've got Mr. Glenn Franklin with us today, three times world champion calf roper, eight times national finalist, won the average once. Just truly, I mean, how many times has he been on our Mount Rushmore when we ask these calf ropers, the Mount Rushmore of calf ropers? The tops of the tops have put yeah. him on the Mount Rushmore. I know, so. every, every time, almost, you know. Truly one of the great ones. And we're just really pleased to have him take time out of his day to visit with us today and and uh, Glenn, welcome to the Cowboys of the Osage podcast. Well, thank you. We're really happy to, happy to have you. Glenn, where in the world is House, New Mexico? Uh, approximately 50 miles from Tucumcari, New Mexico, and 60 from Clovis, New Mexico. Okay. How big a town is it? Uh, Clovis is a pretty good size. I here at house they have one co-op yeah well i know the only time i've ever heard it they used to always announce you were always associated with it they announced glenn franklin from house new mexico yeah, he's made house new mexico yeah, famous. famous he put it on the map for sure yeah glenn did you always grow up wanting to be a cowboy uh yes sir Pretty much. Yes, sir. I had I had a, a deal that come out on Levi's that I started roping a chicken <laughs> on the tags that the brainer put out. Yeah. It was the start I started roping a chicken. Well, they're probably pretty hard to rope. Yeah. Huh. Did he say a chicken? Yes. Yes. Holy moly. It chicken was on an advertisement for Levi's or Wrangler's one. No kidding. Yeah. He's yeah, saying. it was a, one of them books that comes out on Rainers when they first signed me up. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Oh, yeah. I remember those books that yeah. used to be in the back pocket at yeah. every every pair of Cowboy Cut Wranglers they sold. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Told you all the yeah. records and everything. Wow. Yeah. Who were the, some of the Cowboys you looked up to out there when you were a kid? Made you want to be a roper? I always thought a, a man and a good friend was Toots Mansfield. Sure. Sure. Were you old enough to ever remember Bob Crosby? Uh, no. Uh, I remember him and everything, but I never did meet him. But oh. he, he didn't live very far from where I'm at. Really? Oh. Boy, howdy. Old Bob Crosby, they say that he used to... Uh, What'd they call him? Wild Horse? Wild Horse Crosby? Something so. like Wild that? Wild Horse Crosby. Yeah, I think so. Another real famous roper out there, Glenn, you probably, I, was before your time, I know, but it was Jack McClure. You, what have you yeah, heard about? I didn't, uh, yeah, I heard about them guys, but I, I didn't know any of them personally, them two. 
Right, right, sure. Yeah, Cody, he died uh, working cattle or something. He wasn't that old. They said I can't remember if he fell off his horse or got bucked off or something, hit his head. And instead of yeah. taking him to the doctor, they said they just kind of drug him over there in the shade while they worked cattle, and he just died. Heck of a deal. <laughs> What's the first rodeo you ever entered? Oh, I guess maybe two from Kerry. Kids rodeo. 4-H. They probably had pretty a bunch of tough ropers growing up where you grew up, didn't they? Oh, yeah, quite a few. Yeah, quite a few. What made it so tough, so many ropers come out of there, Glenn? Were they just hungry, or what was the deal? Yeah, they just got hungry, had to eat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Cody, when you think of the great ropers from New Mexico, golly, from Bob Crosby, Jake McClure, right on up, Troy Fort, and then, of course, Glenn Franklin, right in the, one of the main ones, Sonny Davis. Old and young, hate to you know, hate to even start naming them because I'll I'll leave some off. But that gum, that's a ropey country out there. Yeah, New Mexico. That's where all the some of the best cowboys ever came from. New Mexico, in my opinion, for sure. For sure. Who helped you get started, Glenn? Uh, was it Tory Ford? Well, yeah, he he helped me a lot. I rode for a year or two. I rode his horse at the buildings, and I stayed with him one winter. What horse was that? A couple of winners. What horse was that? Uh, his name was Streak. Streak. What all building rodeos would you go to in the winter? Uh, the building rodeos was uh, Denver, Fort Worth, San Antonio, and Houston. One, one year I won three of them in a row was Denver, Fort Worth, and and Houston. Uh, yeah, Houston or San Antonio, it was three of them. Wow. Well, what year did you turn pro, Glenn? What year what? Did you turn pro? Oh, I guess it's about 1956. 56, yeah. 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 I graduated in 55 and I uh, got my car in 56, I think. Yeah. Who were some of the tough ropers back then when you just got tried to break out? Uh, uh, Dean Oliver and he was the one that that when I got close that he all he he's the one that took over right. or beat me. Right. You the one until that sixty five. Yeah. You the one two or three other world titles if it hadn't been for Dean Oliver, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I sure thought I would. Yeah, you would have. What made him so tough, Glenn? Well he he was uh, a stout. He was, uh, and then he had a lot of ability. They said he rode Tolstein steers in a dairy some, and he was just, it was just his time to go, to go, and he got a good start, and he was the one that knocked me out for a few years. And then one year, Don McLaughlin. Yeah. Was in that group. What about Don McLaughlin? They said he was really about the best there ever was at leg and calves. Yeah, yeah, he was kind of the legger back then. And Dean used to ask, you know, he'd say that getting off the right thinking was not no good, is it? And all the, all the said would tell him no, it just wasn't any good at all. <laughs> And but uh, but he never did flank much. I don't think he ever got off the right. No. Now they all do. Sure, sure. But I, I think I was the first one that started getting off the right. Really. And 
flanking. Yeah. I've heard several people say you were about the best flanker they'd ever seen on those big calves. Well, I tried. Yeah. You roped at that first national finals, didn't you? 59. What? Roped at what the, did you say? I said you roped at the first national finals in 59, right? Yeah, right, right. What do you remember? In, in the year, year before, I was way in the lead, and at Hobbs, uh, I broke my arm. I got, uh, uh, I blew around, and it was time to go north. And uh, I either had to go or, or quit, but I went. But uh, it just uh, it hurt so bad. I, every time a calf would move the front leg, my my hand would just give out on me, and I, I didn't get many even tied down. But I finally found out the deal and had to, had come home to Amarillo and had it operated on. Was it your left arm or, or roping arm that you broke? Your left arm? Uh, it, it, it was my wrist, down in my wrist, yeah. Yeah, and then I went to that that first finals, and I, it was pretty weak, and I probably shouldn't have went, but anyway, I did. But it... What do you remember about that first finals, Glenn? Well, it was a little while. It was the time of it was about the time that tuna backer was fifteen cents and Holiday Inn was five dollars, <laughs> and gas wasn't very high, but it didn't pay very good either. Right. right. But it. How much? Did you ever? I think I won a, a second day money is about all I, I placed once, but I think it's about two hundred and eighty dollars or so. Hmm. It, it just, but it's it's quite different now, isn't it? Yeah. Did you ever dream that when you were out there that first one that it would ever turn into what it has? No, no, and nobody else did. I don't think at that time. No. When you first started traveling, Glenn, what was your rodeo rig like? What were you traveling in? Well, that year that I was telling you about, that at Hobbs when I had such a good lead, and I, I took a station wagon, and there's two more boys went with me, uh, was Jake Bogart and Bill Templeman, and we had to put our legs up on the, where the, the spare goes kind of, and we didn't have very good bed, but it was a Ford, Ford station wagon and, homemade and a home, homemade trailer. Oh, yeah, a lot of homemade trailers back then, and, and most people rode yeah. in cars, you know. Like you said, they, yeah. they didn't have all the pickups like they do now. Yep, and uh, we was going to Wolf Point, and... Uh, the trailer come unhitched, and uh, it went on one side of the car, and the pickup, and the car went on the other side, and uh, this other boy's horse drowned, and mine just had he got beat up all over, but he didn't, he didn't, it didn't kill him, but he killed Jake Bogart's horse. Wow. Was that a regular trailer hitch on there or a bolt through the bumper? Oh, it was kind of a iron, like a railroad iron, and it just crystallized, I think. Hmm. I'll be darned. But so uh, I was up that year, and I, I was beat up pretty bad, no horse. And, but we made it. Yeah. How long does it take to drive from? house new mexico back then to like pendleton oregon how long did it take y'all to get back there oh really we was always up there that was saying to go north rodeos and we was, we was up in there but uh, i mean it'd take a couple of days to get to pendleton from here but yeah when i, I was already up there and i yeah. stayed 
those or them rodeos. Those highways were a lot different back then, too, weren't they, Glenn? Didn't have all those interstates. Yes, they were. Yep. Yep, they didn't have any of that. Right. Who were some of your travel partners? You mentioned Jack Bogart, but. Yeah, and old, old and young. Yeah. And, and then Sonny Davis. Wow. Well, that's a couple of names right there. What would y'all talk about going down the road? Well, just about anything. Did y'all play well, any- You know, about the roping and rodeos and a little of everything. Do you, you play any pitch going down the road? No, not much. Maybe just a little. Yep. Boy, those are a couple of names, you know, heroes when I was a kid growing up, Cody. They, of course, they were steer ropers, both too, you know, and, well, you talk about some iconic names. No kidding. No kidding. How would you like to be in that rig right there, Jimbo? Oh, yeah. Three of the greatest ropers of all time. Did you ever do any steer tripping? Did you ever do any steer tripping, Glenn, or did you just always cab roper? Well, I, I, I did with Schultz. I went and stayed with him a little bit once in a while, and, and I roped steers at Cheyenne one year. And then I was going to rope in several of them ropings uh, that they had, but it rained one of them out for me. And I was at Fort Smith, and I, I'd won the day money or place good, and and I either had to turn him out or go with that steer roping. But anyway, I I turned the steer roping out, and I went did good at the rodeo. Yeah, sounds like it. Did you ride uh, Schultz Calf Horse Deck some? Yeah, Deck. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I kept him some, and, and but I, I used him quite a bit. Right. What about old Baldy? Did you ever get a chance to ride him? No. No, I, I seen he was there on the ranch, but I, I never did that. Uh, did ride him. How big were them calves you guys were roping back then, Glenn? What'd they weigh? Well, all sizes, but mainly closer to three hundred than the than the two like they do now. But they they were some places there's a lot of big ones and like at Cheyenne they had their mothers at the back for a long time and they was wild and kick and they wasn't very even, you know, but uh, they was uh, all sizes, and then they scored them further. But they was a lot of big, big calves. At, at Los Angeles, I got pictures of them, and they looked like cows, nearly, that they had there. They was real big. Did you flank uh, all the them? Finals went, the finals went to... Uh, where they play basketball at uh, Los Angeles the year after Dallas. Right. For one year, and then they went back to Oklahoma City. Right. Did you flank all those big calves at Los Angeles? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I sure did. In Denver, they used to have big, big white face and black calves. And the first year, I laid them. Really, and uh, I, I didn't have too much problems uh, and m- not much practice legging, but I got along all right there. First first year I went, and that's uh, that was a good start for me. I bet Sonny Davis flanked him too, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he could flank a bull nearly. <laughs> Did you ever see him have to leg a cat? Oh, not not much. Not, I don't think so. I never heard of it. What's the trick to flanking a big calf nice and clean? Well, a, a lot was, to me, it was a lot of timing. And, and in the right place at the right time. And... Because there's a lot of little guys, you know, they was 
big stout guys that didn't get along with Lincoln at all, but sometimes a little guy would come along and get in the right spot and and get uh, lift the same amount on his front end as he did the back ones. And it, and it, uh, I kind of rolled them over my knee a little bit, and that helped. But that was kind of the secret is is a little help both ways. Where'd you get your ropes and strings you were using back then? Uh, well, they had, there at Fort Worth, you know, they had a rope companies, all of them, and, but uh, mainly places like that, and picking strings. Do you make your own strings? No, no. When did you first start seeing the nylon strings come along? Well, I started using them uh, pretty early back then, and I, I don't know where I got them, but I started using them a little, mostly. Most, and, uh, most of your horses, did you, uh, did you buy them already been roped on a little bit, or did you... Do you make well, all your I mean, horses, or did, do you do you like well, to put that a lot of miles one, on one of your horses? That one that uh, that I had up there with me that in that wreck took a rod in his in his nose, and then I I, I broke a horse and got the pick of of the other one, the one I wanted, and he's the one that I started with mostly, and then I bought one from. Uh, Mitch Walling at Clovis at Chichico had him quite a while and then I come up with a horse named Red Light that John D. Holloman had and roped on quite a bit and I had him in the later years. Did you rope very many match ropings, Glenn? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we about broke one year we was at Wolf Point, Montana. We was going down there and somebody thought it was in the night. I mean in the night time and, and it was we had a radio on and it would call every one of us names. <laughs> and we didn't make that but we were aggravated and sure didn't want to rope when we got there, but anyway we got mad and anyway I, I matched uh a uh, boy named Wolford. He he rode the Garrett's horse. The two Garrett's boys at Oklahoma there, they had a good brown horse, and they entered him. And uh, anyway, I, 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 I missed my first, and it was about 13 or 14, 14, I think, on him. And, and then here he come, and he was kind of one of them guys that, I don't know, but anyway, he roped his scab and he uh, started working his horse and hollering. And anyway, he he was about twelve or something. But anyway, I was nine on my next, and and then I had nine three to to beat him, and that's what I was on my last. And then the rest of the year, he he said, "There's the boy that woof woofed out." At Wolf Point, Montana, every rodeo I'd see him, and he'd 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 holler that out. He said, "The boy that woof 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 me out at Wolf Point, Montana." <laughs> you spotted him his first calf, missed him, you know, and then you still beat him. Yeah, I was pretty lucky, but anyway, we got a little traveling money. Yeah, but then I I rode Jim Bob at San Angelo. And I won the first, and I, I think I was riding deck then. But I know I rode him on, on the last. Anyway, I won one, and he won one. And then the next, and uh, I didn't get there in time to look at the calves. And they had all the bad calves on one side that they picked. And I got them first, and they was no good boobers. There's two or three guys said that, that it wasn't fair and that, that I didn't have a chance, which I didn't because they were wild and kicked. And then the ones they had cut out for him, they was quite a bit better cast. 
But anyway. Y'all didn't anyway, swap out uh, calves? Yeah, we did, but see, mine had been tied down, and and that helped him, and then he had my calves second run. Yeah, they were a lot better that second and, time. Yeah, a lot, a lot better, but but I had uh, ropings at, at Clovis. They'd have that big, uh, I think, uh, uh, I think, Pete helped put it on and everything, but it was a four calf rope, and I won it one year. And they come from all over Bandera and and Jim Bob's country and and California. But it was a pretty big match rope and four calves. And then I had rope with Sonny Davis a time or two. How'd that come out? Well, I won won one at Portales. It was later on when I roped a little more. Mm -hmm. 1965, first year you won the world. What can you remember about that year, Glenn? Well, I I, I was rodeoing right with it, and me and Dean was pretty close, and Dean won something at Cheyenne, and I said, uh oh, I said he's gonna win it when he's gonna beat me again, I'm just gonna go home and <laughs> I nearly did, but anyway, then I went to uh Sydney Highway and and somewhere else time or two and, and I won pretty good and he didn't win and that was a year that I, I went ahead and beat him. But but uh most of most of the time or about that time well he come out the best. Yeah. But then after I won it in 65, then it turned around and seemed a lot different. Right. Then I won seven and eight. Did you have a pretty good finals there in 65? Do you remember? Yeah, pretty good. I, I think that's the year I won the finals. I had a kind of a green horse. We went out and roped, and two or three boys said they would give their pocket knife for him. And then anyway, the last two go rounds, I won the last two go rounds, and and I beat Jim Bob just a little bit to win the national final mm -hmm. buckle at Oklahoma City. Wow. Glenn, has there ever been? I a think that was. I think that was sixty-five. Yeah. Has there ever been a tougher bunch of ropers than at one time as you and Jim Bob and Dean and Sonny Davis and Olin Young, Junior Garrison? I mean, that's got to be the toughest yeah. group that there ever was, isn't it? I mean, you might be too much. Yeah, to Junior. I, I took, I think in 65, I think that's the year that I took Junior with me and I entered him and mounted him on my horse for, on the halves and we rode the yokes. That year, I think that was '65 in the summer. Summer rodeos, right? Did yeah, you know old Junior on. Vaughn out there? Yeah, I went on my senior trip with with him. That was my senior trip. I went to Tulsa t and and a few and. It was a little wild, but but I made it. He did too. So he survived it, huh? We've heard a lot yeah, of good stories right. about old Junior Vaughn through the years around here. Yep, yep, yep. He wrote he wrote some of them barefooted. Yep, we've heard that. At, at Vernon, Vernon one year, well, he wrote barefooted. You got to be tough. I bet it seemed like that's a. That'd be a hard dirt clod arena over there, at Vernon, Texas. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I think it was raining, and and it had been been raining, and it was muddy and all. But anyway, he ended up barefooted. Of course, he was he was having a big time before and after, and, but he he rode in the arena bare barefooted. Was he a good roper? Yeah, 
Yeah, he 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 was kind of the long earth the person. He he legged all his cattle. He kind of about Don McLaughlin deal. You know they legged indeed. And he legged most of his, but he he rode pretty good. Were a lot of them old timers getting grouchy about you getting off the right and flanking them when uh, they thought you should be late? Well, them? yeah, like, like I told, I told you, you know, Dean would he asked, he said, "You think it's any faster?" And we'd say, "Oh no, probably not." And, but we never could get him to do it. But uh, evidently, it was a lot faster. And that's about the time he slowed up a little bit. Well, he was when they started getting off the right. He was an athlete, though. I saw some film of him going under the rope, and boy, he was smooth, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. He wrote good. What about New York City? Did you ever go back there to the rodeo, Madison Square Garden? Yeah, uh, that's the buckle that I wear. And it has uh, 11 seconds flat, world record. And that's the buckle that I, I wear all the time. But that, they were big, big calves there, and you couldn't jerk them down. And and they would eat you up. But, but uh, this was just the fastest time they had there in New York at the Madison Square Garden. They had a buzzer back there, didn't they? You you had a uh, you know time at a certain time. Do you remember what the buzzer was? It a minute or something? Do you remember? Uh, I don't. I don't remember. But in my grandpa's day, he said there was a lot of guys got the buzzer back there on those big old calves. That, you yeah, know, like you said, they'd come down the rope, and meet you, couldn't jerk them down. Yeah, yeah. He said he roped one around the horns back there one time. Had long enough horns to rope her where he could handle her a little bit. Yeah. I'd like to go back and watch that, wouldn't you, Cody? Oh, yeah, I would love to go back. Was that rodeo, was it just right downtown New York City? Yeah, they had uh, right there in Bellevue Hotel was right across the, the street from it, and, and uh, they put the horses and the cattle in the basement, and it all was right there in that building that they play basketball and do all that in. Madison Square Garden. How long would y'all be there for? Oh, Lossy, I think it's two weeks. And then Boston was about another two weeks or a week and a half. Were they and right then there from together? there, we were, Yeah, yeah. Boston was right after. And then from there, we went to the Cow Palace at San Francisco. And that, <laughs> that was my look. One of my lucky places was San Francisco. That's quite a road trip, uh, well, uh, Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't mean that. Think I, will, I think I, will, I figured one time I, I won about 12,002 every time I went. I placed at it pretty good. It was one of my lucky places. Every cowboy has a lucky rodeo or two, Jimbo. You know, yeah. It, you yeah. always felt good yeah. about going there because you thought you might win something when you got there because you've yeah. always done good yeah. there before. Did you have any other yeah, superstitions that's, that's, like other cowboys, Glenn? Oh, no, not too bad. You, I, you I, kept yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I kept my hat off the beds. Yeah, I kept my hat off the beds. I still do. I can't help it. Yeah. <laughs> you ever win Calgary or go to Calgary much? Yeah, uh, that year that uh, my hand that I went up there trying to rope, uh, about all I did was sit in that river down there just below the the rodeo grounds and soak my hand. Mm. But uh, I didn't, I, I roped and had him on the ground, but then he kicked his front leg just a little, and, and that's when my broke wrist gave it up. Were there and any, I, I didn't, I didn't win anything. Were there any other rodeos? Yeah, they had a creek running through there. Right. Yeah, I've seen pictures of that. And I had leave my hand in it nearly all day, thinking I'd get well. Right. And but but it never would get well. Finally, I went to a doctor. He showed me the bone in there that was broken. 
and I finally got it fixed. Yeah. Were there any other rodeos in Canada to go to, or was it just that Calgary, and then you came back to the States? No, they had a, a McLeod. Uh, they, they had, and then there's one on the other side of Calgary. Uh, they they were several up there, some before and some after, but we went to one or two on the way up there, kindly. Boy, I can't imagine taking off for Calgary and some of the rigs they had back then. Can you, Cody? Can't imagine taking off for Calgary. I can't imagine leaving Boston, headed to San Francisco to the Cow Palace either. No. Well, that's, that's they, one boy. I forget it. I forget his name, but he drove. He drove straight through, <laughs> and I think I I flew back home and then went out there. But he he drove straight through, and he was about to make the finals. And you know, then it was uh, just like now. It was hard to make the finals, and he was trying. Yep. It used to be the last rodeo of the year. Was it the last rodeo of the yeah. year when you were there too? Yeah. 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 Sure was. And, uh, a lot of hearts uh, are broken. Uh, right so out one, there. one year, one, that one year I uh, was about, oh, if I'd have won everything, I might have could have won it. But anyway, it might have been the year Dean won the all around. But anyway, uh, I got in a bulldog in it, a little Safford or so, a little rodeo on the way out there, and I placed in the bulldog in it, and I finished third in the all around. And I was sitting second, but anyway, I finished third. But if they, things would have went right, I thought, you know, I had a chance to win the all around, but, but I, I didn't. You just entered that one bulldog in, though? Yeah. Yeah, one rodeo. Dang, just think if you'd entered a few more. No. I can't even imagine bulldogging no. back then, Jimbo, because that was serious business. That, I, yeah. I saw a tape of that first uh, NFR the other day. Right. And the biggest boys, they yeah. those, some of them steers, they'd pick their head up and they'd pick them, pick them boys up and just walk off with them. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don Brandon, he, he had a rodeo team. And I asked him why he thought I was good enough to really get after that bulldog. He said, no, you better stay with the calf roping. <laughs> but he let me ride his good horse. Hmm. Did you fly to any rodeos back then, Glenn? Yeah, I, I did the last two championships. Well, I, I did quite a bit of, of flying. And, uh, Tim Prather had a pretty good horse, and I rode him. One year at uh, Cheyenne when I when I won Cheyenne. Who'd you well, fly? Well, me and Blair Burke we split it. One year at Cheyenne, when I rode Tim Prather's horse. Yeah. And and uh, we, me and Blair, me and Barry split first. Who's in the lightning airplane? Oh, lightning. lightning airplane. Yeah, one time I was coming from Pendleton to Albuquerque, and I was sitting good and just had to get there. And I was with Harley May and another bull, another bulldogger and Tim Prather. And, uh, we the, we run into a storm, and the lightning hit the airplane, and... Uh, we start smelling and we get pretty scared. And anyway, we got out of that mess and then we hit the bright lights. And, and uh, Tim said, Get your rope and get it ready. Your rope can back here. And boy, we were standing up ready to go and get to Albuquerque to rope. And they started laughing and said, Sorry, but this is Las Vegas. But we got off the wrong way. <laughs> anyway, they turned our calves out and the bulldoggers, Harley May and some of the other boys, they they wasn't up till the next night, but they wasn't worried about that. But we didn't make it a couple of us. I had a drove but on I had a lot of lot of experience and I landed in a few fields and Really? 
when the year Salt Lake was flying and we hit come about ten foot from a high line post and war and had a lot of close calls but it all come out all right. Wow. I just can't imagine flying back then, you know, with the cowboy pilot. Was it some, one of your cowboy yeah, friends yeah. flying? Yeah. Yeah, it was just a cowboy flying. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna do that game. <laughs> he and he run out of we run run out of gas going, and he landed in a, a field, alfalfa field, and then going back to Salt Lake, he nearly run over the. It was real foggy, and he nearly hit the high line post. But we made both of it. But had a lot of close calls. You mean you got back in there after you landed in the field? You after got, you ran you out of gas, gas, you got back in there. Yeah, he got he got the gas put on, and then we got. A, Went go back to Salt Lake, and then it was real foggy before we hit Salt Lake, and and it was a little while uh, when we see these telephone lines right close, but we we, we made it. Wow! By the skin of your teeth, but, huh? By the skin of your teeth, it sounds like barely made it. Yeah, yeah, we made it. <laughs> Yeah. I can't believe you got right, back right. in the plane after it ran out of gas. No, no. <laughs> I definitely, yeah. after it about hit the high line poles, I'd have had to drive home from Salt, Salt Lake. There ain't no way I was going to get no, back No, I'd have walked plane. home from <laughs> South, Salt Lake. Yeah, but when, you, when, you, when you're young and wanting to rope and wanting to win, well, you do about anything. I do. I can relate to, to that, too, for sure. Yeah. Do you, do you keep up with the rodeo today, Glenn, much on the Cowboy Channel or anything? Yeah, I sure do watch that television, uh, uh, TV. It's awful good watching. Yeah. And we went we went to the national finals five years after that, and my boy made it in five, for five years. Yeah. The camp roping. He was de- he's definitely one of the best ropers ever, too. Sean Franklin. Gosh, yeah. dang. He never won the yeah, World Cup, did he? No, no. He made, he, he made the finals five times, but he, he he didn't win the championship. Oh, yeah. He wrote, he wrote about the time Fred and Joe yeah. and Cody, Cody O. Yeah. That's a tough group of ropers, too, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, sir. What do you think about the money today? Oh, it's it's wonderful, isn't it? And and it's getting better every day for girls and boys. Yeah, uh, that year yeah. you won all those winter rodeos. Have you ever figured up what you'd have won in t- today if it, if that happened today? Yeah, I could have retired. I could have retired better. But I, I set the, the record one year, or maybe two years, at, at about, I think it was 31000 or something. It's most that's ever been won at that time, you know. Yeah, right, right. Now, that went a ways, too, back then. I mean, he, how many how many pickups could you have bought for $33,000 back then? Yeah, yeah, right. Now you can't even yeah. sniff one. For- yeah. And my, my my daughter, she when we went to Las Vegas in five years with my daughter, she she was running for Miss Rodeo America, but she finished second. She didn't win first. Wow. What about that little setup out there in Las Vegas? How, how do you think you'd have done out there in your prime? I think I, I, I would have really liked it because – I roped a lot of calves quick. It was a setup, you know, one swing, and you can rope them and win something at Las Vegas. Right, right. And I, I always, I like to rope, rope them quick, you know. And I think, I think it'd been a good setup for me. Yeah, yeah. It makes it makes me my mouth water a little bit when I watch it, though. <laughs> yeah. I bet it does thirty some thousand dollars yeah. rounds, yeah, and and all of them and the money, yeah, for sure. What's it's you- great, great, great sport. Yeah, sure is. 
What did a ta- what did a typical day in the practice pen be like for you, Glenn? What was that? What was a typical day in the practice pen for you? Oh, uh, I, I over at Clovis, uh, there's uh, he, there's a fellow that had calves, and he charged twenty five cents to rope them and he didn't he wanted that money and he let us rope a lot and I stayed over there a little while we roped a whole bunch of calves in just one swing rope rope them fast and time quick and I think that helped me a lot uh, because in the younger days you know uh, you got to be able to rope quick especially now but but we did a lot of practice and I'd rope Oh, uh, twenty or thirty every time, every day, you know, for a while there. And did you lay a lot of calves down and practice time? Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Clovis, did you know most most of my family's from Clovis, New Mexico, Jimbo? I know. Did you know my granddad, Pete yeah. Garnet? Yes, sir. Very well. Yep. Yeah, it's good, good friends. Pete. Did you ever go to the horse sale over there at Clovis? Yeah, a lot. Yep. Well, they sold yeah. a lot of horses out of there, haven't they? They sure have. Yep. They sure have and still do, but they've kind of moved it to level land now. That's what I've been reading. They have the closed horse sale at level land now, too. Where do all those horses come from out there? Just that country? They haul Ever, them in there? Er, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Oklahoma, Texas. Yeah. yeah. Everywhere. Yeah, it's just a good central point for people to. Go buy yeah. some good horses, I guess, Jimbo. Yeah. It's been a big horse sale for a long time. Right. Oh. For yeah. sure. I'll be darned. Glenn, if you were putting together a Mount Rushmore of cab ropers, need four names, who would you put on your Mount Rushmore? I guess you'd have to put Dean because he, he was – the fierce one when I was trying to trying to get to the top and then and then like the Oklahoma boy Junior roped off a good him and Barry yep. and then Jim Bob and then Glenn Franklin yeah I would put him on there too <laughs> yeah there's a lot of people put him on there yeah Right. We're sure. We're sure. Well, Mr. Franklin, we uh, wish you the best and keep your head well, on tight out there. It's, I hear it's windy that in that part of the country. Yeah, it is. And thanks a lot for having me. If you ever get back this way, why, uh, holler at us and we'll show you the museum. Okay, and same to y'all. Okay. All right. Well, it's been another great episode, Jimbo. A great one, for sure. Great one with one of the greats. Hey, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Franklin. A great one with one of the greats, for sure. All right, everyone. This has been another great edition of the Cowboys of the Osage podcast. See y'all next week. Be sure and like and share everything. It means a lot to me and Jimbo. You bet. See (laughs) y'all. Old stories like long lost friends. Rodeos and late night bends History before our time Round pens and pasture rides Cowboys of the Osage